What is going on guys? My name is Hussein. In this video, I want to discuss RabbitMQ and HTTP2. Uh, RabbitMQ, I made a video about RabbitMQ. Check it out guys here. It's a very interesting message queue that I have my doubt about, but I a little bit changing my, my, my mind about it because it's a really, really great tech. And uh, it had a feature that I fall in love the moment I read about it. And it's called channels. And let's talk about that a little bit and then compare it to HTTP2 streams that also we're going to talk about it. All right. So when you have a, a RabbitMQ server or, or a broker right here, right, and you have a client, which is usually called a consumer, the client establishes a TCP connection between itself and the server. And we know how TCP works. Guys, check it out. There is in the client library for RabbitMQ, they add some abstraction called the channel. And the reason they did that is like every request you want to send to the server, you have to specify the channel ID. And they have headers for every request they send tagged with the channel ID. And you might say, why do you want to do this? This is so awesome technology. The reason is, instead of having multiple clients to establish a multiple TCP connections to the server, you now have one TCP connection and all of these requests are funneled in the same TCP connection. And now you can send a request and expect a response back even if that request is already, you're sending another request in the same TCP channel because uh, they are very uniquely tagged with the channel ID. So now you can simultaneously send requests on the same TCP connection. And that's exactly how HTTP2 works, guys. The idea of streams. Browsers before HTTP2, what did they do? Remember, every request you send, you can only send one request at a time. And you better send one request at a time because you cannot we don't know that response that comes back, which request was it for? Because it's just garbage data coming out and in, right? So they made the decision way back to say, oh, send one request and wait for the response to come back. And that request must be for that, that response must be for that request and so on. That's that's called essentially head of line blocking. So it's like, so that the rest of the requests are blocked until that response is actually the first response received. And that's a problem, right? And that same problem exists with TCP and any request response system. So what RabbitMQ did is they added this abstraction of the idea of channels in the TCP connection. So every request is almost uniquely identified in the channel itself. That is very similar to the idea of HTTP2 streams, which we talked about the, right here. Go check it out. So HTTP2 streams serves a very similar idea. You have one TCP connection instead of six, like what the browsers used to do in HTTP1. And then if you make a GET request, they are tagged with the stream ID. If you make a POST request, simultaneously they are tagged with a stream id if you make another get request to fetch an image if you make another request to fetch a css or or an html file or a javascript file they are tagged uniquely with a stream id very similar to the channel id and they are shoved into the tcp connection right and now when you come back the the response that comes back is tagged with a stream id so you know oh so you know that, oh, this this response is actually for this stream. All right, so you actually can assemble things in the client. So it doesn't matter what the order comes back. If this comes back or this comes back first, and it doesn't really matter. So even if there are some delays, right? So why I made this video is like, I'm not sure who actually invented this idea of, of multi-concurrent tagging of requests. So, RabbitMQ or HTTP2 or Speedy, Google was invented this idea, right? So I was just like, I'm just, we're very curious about this. So both obviously come back to the final, my final point is both HTTP2 and RabbitMQ suffer from a very severe problem, which is the TCP 
it's just, it's a problem with the TCP itself, right? And the problem with TCP is like if you sing a packet and the packet is damaged or haven't received by the server and there's no acknowledgement, and that's a packet, right? It's just a packet. The client always retransmit that packet back, right? And that causes any other requests, packets that you are about to send to have wait for an acknowledgement to be received from the server. This is at the packet level, guys. This is not at the stream level. So if you're, that means if stream one technically didn't receive an acknowledgement, stream two cannot even be fired to the server, which is very bad, right? That's a problem with TCP. That's a very, and, and that problem carries with RabbitMQ. It's a very similar problem. And that's why, guys, Quick was invented. Say, so you know what? We cannot rely on, on the idea of retransmission to put it at, the, at that lower level of, uh, of our architecture. You cannot implement that at the lower level. So what they said is that I'm not gonna, we're gonna not gonna use TCP for retransmission. We're gonna use the bare bone UDP, which doesn't have any of this feature. It just sends a request and relies on the higher level of uh, application to actually does that retransmission and verification of the packets and that's what quick did quick implemented re-implemented tcp by the higher level and they built in stream in it so now you can use one logical connection there are no connections in udb so they create a kind of a similar logical connection and now you can send as many requests as you want and they are tagged with a stream id and if one stream had a bug in it i don't know the packet didn't receive correctly that the quick client will only retransmit that it will not stop the rest of the streams right all the all the channels if you want to call them right the rest of the stuff will just go normally right because they have nothing to do with the first one because if the stream two is good or stream three is good and stream one is bad why do you have them to suffer, right? Like what HTTP does today, right? HTTP 2, if stream 1 is bad or has a, I don't know, it was transferred in the ocean, the fiber was caught, right? The stream 1 will, will suffer and stream 2 and stream 3 or stream 5, all the streams will suffer. So you will feel the slowness with HTTP 2. That's the problem with this, right? So... Quick solves this problem very elegantly at that level. And now HTTP 3 is built as a very thin layer on top of Quick that uses all these protocols. That brings me back to the final, my final point is like, I think most message queues, right? And databases and protocols should start using queues to be honest, right? Because that solves a huge problem with TCP. TCP had this problem with retransmission and the packets, right? And now concurrent sending concurrent requests at the same time. And that just magnificently quick solves this problem for you, right? Today, I just wanted to talk about RabbitMQ and, and the idea of channels and then uh, HTTP2 and then how both of these are having this problem now solves with Quick and Quick have their own problem. I'm not going to discuss in this channel, but definitely I'm going to make a video dedicated for Quick. But I was very interested to know that the similarities between RabbitMQ as its own from scratch protocol building with the channels, very similar to the HTTP2 protocol. All right, guys. I'm going to see you in the next one. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe. And what do you guys think? What is the future protocol? Do you think Quick will hold to its glory and it's going to become really well-known protocol that is used everywhere? Because I am I have a good feeling. In the next 10 years, Quick is going, to, is going to become a big thing. There's one problem that I'm, going to, I'm not going to mention here. It's essentially the UDP and how the internet treats UDP. But that's for another video like this video if you like it. I'm gonna see you in the next one. You guys stay awesome.